Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. This is Lesson 7, Magnitude. So the classwork first starts out with a couple of facts. Fact 1, the number 10 to the n for arbitrary large positive integers n is a big number in the sense that given a number m, no matter how big it is, there's always going to be a power of 10 that will exceed that m, okay? So let's just start out small. So for example, say m equals 105. This says that no matter how big it is, there's a power of 10 that exceeds m. Well, powers of 10 are 10 to the 0, which equals 1. 10 to the 1 equals 10. 10 to the second or squared equals 100 and 10 to the third equals 1000 so here's my m 105 and now I know there is a number to the power of something that is bigger than it that's all this is saying there's a power of 10 that exceeds that value fact 2 says the number 10 to the negative n for arbitrary large positive integers n is a small number in the sense that given a positive number s, no matter how small it is, there is a negative power that of 10 that is smaller than s. So that means, let's say m, um, well, let's see, are they using m here? Positive number s, no matter how small it is, there's a negative power. Okay, so now they're using the letter s instead of m, that's fine. So s, let's let s equal 0 0.03. What this is saying is there is a power, so 10 to the 0 equals 1. 10 to the negative 1 equals 1 over 10, which equals 0 0.1 or 1 tenth. 10 to the negative 2, by our rule, says it's 1 over 10 squared which equals 1 over 100, which is 0.01, okay? And I have 0 0.03. Well, 0 0.01, 1 one hundredth and 3 one hundredths are values where one is smaller than the other. Okay, so we have 1 out of 100, 1 one hundredth. Well, 3 out of 100 is more, so we're looking for a value that's less. 1 one hundredth is less than 3 one hundredths. So it says that the number 10 to the negative m for arbitrary large numbers, n is a small number in the sense that given a positive number s, no matter how small it is, there is a negative power of 10 that is smaller than s. Okay, so 0 0.01 is smaller than s, so I found a value of a power of 10 that is less than 0.03. Okay. So that's what these two facts are saying. So now let's move on to exercise one. And it says, let M equal this really big number. So this is thousands, millions, trillions, zillions, I guess, right? Thousands, millions, billions, trillions. Okay, I didn't think that sounded right. It's trillions. So the first thing I'm going to do is start out with the given and write M equals 993. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, nine, eight, seven, six, five. Okay, we want to find the smallest power of 10 that will be bigger than this number. The smallest power of 10. I can easily say, oh, 10 to the 500th is bigger, sure. But I want the smallest power of 10 that's bigger. Okay, so 10 to the 499 is bigger, but it, and it's smaller than 500, but that's probably not the answer to this either. So I have to find the smallest power of 10 that will still be larger than this given value. So the first thing I'm going to do is write this number is less than, and I'm going to round this number up. So if I round up to the, to the position, so if I want to round 5 up to 9, I'm going to round this thing up to the nearest next number. In other words, when I say next number, the comma and then the 1 coming up. I would just want to round all of these up to 9. So the 9 stay 9, but this 3 is going to get rounded up to 9. And the 4, 5, 6 will all be 9s. 
and the 7, 8, 9 will all be 9s. 7, 9, 9, 9. And the 0, 9, 8 will be 9, 9, 9. And the 7, 6, 5 will be rounded up to 9, 9, 9. So I rounded up to the biggest number with the same number of digits is what I was trying to say a minute ago. So this number is smaller than this number. And we are looking for a power of 10 that is bigger than this. So we're going in the right direction. We need a larger number. Now I'm just going to add one to that. So if I add one to this, that's gonna be 10, carry the one, 10, carry the one, 10. You get the idea? So this, these are all going to end up zeros. I'm going to add a 1 at the end. So I'm going to have a 1, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay. So I just added 1 to what I rounded a minute ago. So my original number rounded up to the largest number with the same number of digits and then add one. Okay. And now that is going to equal 10 to the power of how many zeros you have. And there's 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. So 10 to the 15th power is the first number base 10 to a power that is bigger than the original. So all we had to do is round all of them up to 9, add 1, count the zeros, and the number of zeros is our exponent. And I'm going to talk about that a little further. So this position right here are the 1s. And 10 to the 0 equals 1. And this position are the 10s. And 10 to the 1 equals 10. Okay? I'm kind of cramped here. It's hard to write here. So this would be, this position here would be 10 to the 1, which is 10. And that's the 10s position. And then this one would be 10 to the 2, which is 100th position. So if I start out by counting 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, then I'm going to get the 15th position is where the 1 is, and that's how we come up with how many. Or you can just count the zeros. That's probably easier. Okay, so my answer is 10 to the 15th power. Okay. Exercise two, it's the same thing. So pause the video, see if you can do this. Come back and we'll see what, how that worked. Okay, so here we go. So the first thing I'm going to do is say M equals 78,491 and 899 987. Okay. And I'm going to say that's less than. The first thing I want to do is get rid of this fraction. Well, if I round this fraction up to 999 over 999, well, that's equal to 1. And I take that 1, and it goes to the next position. So rounding this up and getting rid of the fraction will make this 78,492. So we're just getting rid of that fraction and adding 1 to our 1's position. That is the next largest integer greater than this fraction. So that's the first step. Next step, round them all up to nines. I have five digits, so I'm going to have five nines. So this is 99,999. And that is 78,492 is less than 99,999. I'm going to add one. So it's going to be, instead of a five-digit number, a six-digit number starting with one, and the rest are zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six. So 900, or 99,999 is less than 100,000. And 100,000 is 10 to the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 10 to the 5. And, or there are five zeros. So the smallest power of 10 that exceeds m, that's greater than m, is 10 to the 5th power. That is the first number greater than that. That is 10 to a power of a number. Okay, exercise three. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. This was just asking to explain how to find the smallest power of 10 that exceeds it when m is some positive integer. When I ask students to do this, what they generally will do is 
choose a value for m and give an example, but they really wanted you to say, let m be a positive integer and go on from there. I'll bring in the results of what they were looking for here, not just substituting in a value for m and doing another example, but to explain it for any number m, depend, not, independent of how many um, place values it has. Okay, so if m is a positive integer, so we have to say that, then the power of 10 that exceeds it will be equal to the number of digits in m. For example, if m were a 10-digit number, then 10 to the 10 would, be ex would exceed m. If m is a positive number but not an integer, then the power of 10 that would, be ex that would exceed it would be the same power of 10 that would exceed the integer to the right of m on a number line. For example, if m equals 5,678.9, the integer to the right of m is 5,679, then based on the first explanation, this has four digits, so the power of 10 is going to be four, will exceed both this integer m, and this is because m equals 5,678.9, which is less than 5,679, which is less than 10,000, Okay, they just skipped the step of 9,999 in the adding one. And there are four zeros, so it's 10 to the fourth power. Okay. If you need to pause that and write that down, feel free. It's a very good explanation. Exercise four. The chance of you having the same DNA as another person other than an identical twin is approximately 1 in 10 trillion. 1 trillion is a 1 followed by 12 zeros. Okay, and I had a student say, uh, it's 13. So, they were looking at this. So this is, they don't use commas, and it's always a good idea to use commas. Okay, this is 10 trillion. Okay, so now that I look at this closer, they had made a mistake here. 1 trillion so a chance you have the same DNA is 1 in 10 trillion. Okay, this is 10 trillion. And then they said 1 trillion is a 1 followed by 12 zeros. But we're not talking about 1 trillion. We're talking about 10 trillion. So it's followed by 13. 10 trillion is followed by 13 zeros. And that's what we have here. Given the fact, the fraction, express this very small number using a negative power of 10. Okay, well, the first thing I'm going to do is use the positive power of 10. I'm going to put a 10 down here, count my zeros, 3, 6, 9, 12, 13, and I'm going to put a 13 here. And then I'm going to use my rule of exponents, and that says if I have a fraction and I don't want this in the denominator, I can move it to the numerator like this and make the power negative and then I don't need to divide it by one that's unnecessary to show so my answer is 10 to the negative 13. Exercise 5. The chance of winning a big lottery prize is about 10 to the negative 8th power. That's the lottery. Okay. And the chance of being struck by lightning in the U.S. in any given year is so getting struck by lightning and having a Harry Potter forehead, the chance is 0 0.000001. Which do you have a greater chance of experiencing? Explain. Okay. So what I would do here was 10 to the negative 8 is going to be equivalent to... So I can either make this a decimal, or I can make this decimal a power of a negative value. We have to get these two in the same format. So I'm going to take this 10 to the, or 0 0.000001, and I'm going to say that that is equal to 1 over, and that's 10th, 100th, 1,000th, 10,000th, 100,000th, millionth, 1 million. That's 1,000. That's 1 million. Okay. This is then going to be 1 over 10 to the number of zeros I have, which is 6. 
Okay. And then if I do this rule up here, then that is going to become 10 to the negative 6. So now I have 10 to the negative 6, and I have 10. Now, well, instead of moving that because it's connected to lottery, let me just rewrite it. So I have 10 to the negative 6, and I have 10 to the negative 8. So which is smaller, 10 to the negative 8 or 10 to the negative 6? So think of a number line. Okay, I'm back after that bell. Okay, so here's zero, uh, here's one, here's negative one. So obviously when we are getting smaller, we're going to the left, it's getting, it's decreasing. So as the negatives go this way, negative two, negative three, the number's getting smaller. So negative six and negative eight, negative eight is smaller. So my answer is gonna be 10 to the negative six is greater than 10 to the negative eight, which means you have a better chance of getting hit by lightning in the US than you do winning the lottery. Exercise six. There are about 100 million smartphones in the US and I have one smartphone. What share of US smartphones do I have? Well, I'd say this is me compared to 100 million, which is that. Okay, express your answer using a negative power of 10. So the first thing I'm going to do is say that that is going to be one over 10 to the power of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight zeros. So that's 10 to the eight. And then I take my rule and I take the reciprocal of my fraction and make it 10 to the eight over one, or don't have to show the one. So it's just 10 to the eight, but the eight becomes negative. So a negative exponent power of 10 for 100 millionth is 10 to the negative eight. Okay, that is the end of lesson seven. Go to your problem set.